Hey everybody, this is Brad Bruce and I'm here with Jason Marsiglia and you are listening to the 5195 podcast. I thought of something. What's that? Before the show. And I wanted to run it by you. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like shooting from the hip. So you're going to have to use that big, beautiful brain of yours. Okay. Let me wake it up. Yeah. Wake it up. Wake it up. One good sneeze ought to do it. Just over there. (laughs) There. Perfect. Okay. It doesn't have to be localized to one individual, but for me, it's only one. Okay. Who is the nicest person you've ever met or people in this industry? Oh, okay. Yeah. The Um, genre. Okay. Um, Let me break that down a little bit because I've been very, very lucky in the 10, 11, 15 years, whatever, I've been going to cons. Pick one. I've just never had... (laughs) I know. Is it 10? Is it 11 or is it 15? Well, no. I've I've never... Yeah, I started going in 08. So what? That's 15 then as of this year? That's how math works. That's how math works, I think. Yeah. Is it is it is the same kind of math here on the West Coast? Well, yeah, we have a what are those things with the beads? Not those. It's not a. Is it a? It's not a syllabus. I don't know. Let, uh, sure, let's call it a syllabus. Okay, all right. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so, I have not had bad experiences. I'm very lucky in that regard because I have met a lot of people that have been considered by redditors or whoever to be hostile and i've not had a bad experience with anybody so they've all been nice for me could i probably just pick the ones who have been the most encouraging or influential who kind of paved me somewhere a little bit that count i mean anything that just stands out to you that's like man i hold that person in high regard yes so yeah it's it's a wide it it is but it it helps me eliminate because because again and not just like a nobody's nobody like everyone's thrown a handshake my way or a hug and they've been super gracious and you know everyone i've met in the horror industry has just been super nice and i've i've been very lucky in that regard but there's been a few that have been above and beyond in my opinion right so um so what uh you want to do yours first since you've got you've got that one give you some time to put it together so he's what he's saying is he's not going to pay attention to me so I'm no. going to be talking I'm, to... I'm going to put like pen to paper. He's just okay. going to talk to right, the top cool. of my So head. I'm going to talk to this Batman mask that's up here. That's fine. Okay. Yeah, cool. that works. All right. Okay. All right. So our first guest is Batman. He's uh, Batman. No. No. My, <laughs> he, he lets you know. <laughs> the person that, that really stood out to me and I formed a relationship with and really encouraged me and championed me and really wanted me to succeed and did his best to help... Mm-hmm was Irwin Keys. Wow. I met him at a show and it was a I don't want to name the show, but yeah, just just for the the story purposes, I don't want to name the show. That's fine. But it was a local show here in SoCal and the turnout was not good. Oh. So there was lots of guests, but not lots of fans. Yes. Ouch. Okay. So I saw him sitting there and he was one of the few people that actually did have people up at his, at his table talking to him. Mm -hmm. So I saw him and I remembered him from the Warriors. I remember seeing him on the Jeffersons. (laughs) Okay. The Flintstones movies. Yep. I mean, he's just a, that guy. He's a very distinct look. Yeah. Very distinct. Yeah. I mean, he's done a million things. The thing that I always go to for Irwin was uh, he was in an episode of Police Squad. Okay. The Naked Gun, y- pro- pre-Naked Gun TV show. And uh, I think it was directed by Joe Dante. Oh, okay. And he played a, uh, he was a hitman. And the, one of the gags that he did that had me cracking up was, you'd see, uh, it, was, it was a, the whole episode, it had to do with um, boxing and people taking dives and, you know, all this stuff. So, of course, Leslie Nielsen's investigating this illegal boxing ring. And the part with her one that cracked me up was boxers in his dressing room after the fight. And there's this little innocent looking family and the security guard's like, no, no, you can't come in. Can't see the guy. And he's brushing him off. Then Irwin walks up. Carry, he's got like bullet belts on, uh, a lit fuse bomb that he's holding. And then all the guy's like, 
Uh, no, he's not seeing anyone right now. And Erwin, he's got a fedora on, but it's got the little press card in it. He goes, press. And the guy goes, oh, yeah, just right this way. <laughs> and it's like he, <laughs> and of course, behind him, once the door shuts, you're hearing explosions and screaming and all this shit. And yeah. security guards just yawning. like. Oh. But I just, I'll never, to me, that's Erwin to me, was like the heavy in that yeah. Joe Dante police squad yeah. episode. Did you ever meet him? Never. Never met him? Never did. And he... I started going to cons in 08, and most of them were right in my backyard. We had, like, Motor City Nightmares. And Irwin, I don't believe, ever made it out that way. Okay. I just couldn't afford to shoot around the country to the big ones. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, yeah, it just I, I never had the pleasure, unfortunately. Yeah. Great guy. Which is funny, because I remember the first time I met you, and we were shooting Maternal... You had his autograph on the wall. Mm -hmm. I think from, was it Thousand Corpses? There was a bunch. There were, yeah, okay. Um, I just remember you pointing out one of them and yeah. just saying, have you met that guy? And I hadn't at that time either. Okay. And uh, you just told me, you were like, that guy was amazing. Yeah. And he, I believe at the time he had just passed. Yeah. It was like 2015. Yeah. yeah. So it was still pretty fresh. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I remember you pointing out an autograph and just being like, yeah, that dude was solid. Yeah. yeah. No, he was. He was super genuine. Mm -hmm. um, he loved his work. He loved his fans, and it really showed. The first autograph I ever got from Irwin was for Friday the 13th. Because the show was not full, he really took some time on the which, autograph. <laughs> which is really nice. It was. It you was. Do, you you know? do get that extra time. Yeah. You know. you know, and he was talking about, you know, we made this film in 77. It was a great film then. It's a great film now. It really held up. He really wrote some stuff on this thing. You know? mm -hmm. And um, so after that, you know, we started talking. He was like, sit down. And he had an empty chair. Mm -hmm. And the buddy that I went with was like, what the fuck are you doing? You know? And I'm like, hey, this dude tells me to sit down. I'm going to sit down. Yeah. I was going to say, what? Yeah. I, I don't have time, Mr. Keith. Yeah. So I sat down and we just started talking about life. You know, do you have kids and this and that? And um, I told him, you know, I didn't have kids and, you know, I had, I had a fiance. He was like, where are you from? And I was like, Marietta and... and Super relatable on everything I talked about with him. And we talked for probably an hour and a half. That's awesome. And I was like, okay. Yeah. All yeah. right. You know, if you're cool with it. Yeah. And so, you know, we we just talked. And then I, I remember he's like, well, I'm going, I'm going to go get food. I was like, okay. And he was like, you hungry? <laughs> and I was like, wow. absolutely. Yeah. So we walked uh, down the street to a restaurant. We ordered some burgers and fries. Mm -hmm. And and the whole time I'm doing this like just like pinch you know pinch myself thing. Sure. Even then it was just we weren't talking film, just, you know, or the stuff hang. he did. Yeah, it was just you know he's talking about coming from New York and his early life, you know, mm -hmm. and what it was like, and you know that he never had kids and he wished he would have, and he was really like sentimental. Yeah. And so. We walk, We finished up lunch. We walked back over to the show, and I was like, "Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get out of your hair, dude. Like, I'm not, you know, I don't want to wear out this welcome. This is, you know, sure, yeah, really, really cool, and I don't want this to tarnish by me hanging around." Yeah. And he's like, "Here, before you go," and he gave me his card with his cell phone number on it. Really. And he's just like, "Shoot me your number, so I got, so I can lock it in." I was like, oh, "Okay," and I started to walk away, and he's like, "No, I mean right now." Yeah. And I was like, "Oh." Because normally when that happens, it's like, yeah, don't call us. We'll call you. Yeah. No, I get that. And so, like, I called him and he's like, okay. You know, he puts my number in there and, you know, my name. And I was like, wow. You know, I was like, all right. And then went home and I was like on cloud. I'm telling everyone, you know, I'm just like, man, this guy was the coolest guy ever. And we call Intolerable Cruelty came out. I went right out to see it, you know. Sure. And it was just like, oh. And what he was talking about was hilarious where he played a character named Wheezy Joe. In... The Intoler flick? intolerable cruelty. Okay. Yeah. And um, he had asthma. Mm. And and in the character had asthma. Right. So the scene, and if no one's ever seen it, well, spoiler. Um, he's having this like discussion with <laughs> with Clooney, mm -hmm. and he's gonna shoot Clooney. Okay. But the whole time he's just <laughs> with his. Keeps puffing. Inhaler, yeah. And right before he goes to shoot Clooney, he points 
the inhaler at him and sticks a gun in his mouth. And oh, pop. that's right. I forgot all about that. Yes. <laughs> I do remember that. I only saw that movie once at the theater. Same. And, well, uh, I actually, at the theater, I only seen it once, but then I bought it when it came out on DVD. Did you? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. My wife and I went and seen it, and I, rem- I remember that now. The, yeah. You know, yeah. the inhaler. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. Yeah. And totally so forgot about that. I'm like, well, maybe this is my opportunity to let him know. So I sent him a text. Yeah. I was like, just got out of seeing Intolerable Cruelty. Oh my God. That scene was hilarious. It got a huge laugh in mm-hmm. the theater. Great job. And of course you expect, you know, you expect like, well, you'll get a text message within a day or two or whatever. If it comes at all. If it comes. Yeah. I didn't get a text. My phone rings and it's him. <laughs> okay. And he's just like, big laugh, huh? And I was like, yeah. I was like, man, people were loving it. And he was like, that makes me so happy. I'm like, I really enjoyed it. The character was great. Like, That's It cool. was really, yeah, it was really fun. And he's like, hey, we're having, there's another convention next weekend. You should come. And I was like, okay. He's like, Val Kilmer and stuff is going to be here and all this stuff. And I was like, oh, yeah, okay. I'll, I'll swing by. Yeah. So I did, I showed up and, you know, he was there and he remembered me, obviously. And, you know, uh, once again, it was just talking and talking and talking. And and it really developed into like, because the first time I never even told him like, well, I want to be a filmmaker and I, I want to do this. And, you know, because that was still very, very new for me. Sure. When all that was happening. Right towards the second time I had actually physically saw him, that's when he was like, what do you, what do you do? What do you, what, you know? And yeah. I was like, well, I'm trying to be a filmmaker. Mm-hmm. And he was like, really? He's like, okay. And he's like, what have you done? Anything I've seen? And I was like, nope. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, I've got a couple of shorts on YouTube, and it got four views, and I think one of them was my mom. So, <laughs> yeah. no, <laughs> you didn't Still see Still <laughs> very fledgling. Yeah, there, you know? yeah. So, um, he made me pull them up on YouTube mm-hmm. at the show. Wow. And he watched them. And they were just, they were like these little like Halloween short things that we did. They were uh, gags. You know, I told you about the one called don't move that we did. And he was like, he thought it was hilarious. He thought it was funny. He was really like laughing and like Irwin had a laugh. (laughs) Oh yeah. He had a laugh and it was, you know, it wasn't just for the flicks. No. And it made me feel really good that he was at, you know, he was laughing. So then after the show, we had went to dinner. We had a, beautiful dinner at sizzler mm. <laughs> it was it was funny because i'm like well where do you want to go let's go somewhere you know and he was like that place like we're just gonna go to we're gonna go there okay so we, you know we walk in and you know we sit down and it's funny because we were close to the show so there were some the, the the spillage of fans oh sure yep and they saw him and of course they come up take pictures autographs stuff like that and he was like all about it you know sure really cool we ended up almost closing the place <laughs> Um, he was like, yeah, I'm flying out. I'm doing this movie, whatever it was. And he was like, you know, I'll, I'll hit you up when I come back. Mm-hmm. I was like, okay. And like clockwork, I think it was like a month or so later, he he calls me and tell me about the shoot. And like, he's, he's, he's got, he had great stories. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if it ever came out, but he was writing a memoir. Okay. He told me on the phone stories that were in this book i don't know if it's out it was hilarious the stuff he was telling me because it was stuff that people want to know oh yeah the things people people love anecdotes i love anecdotes yeah you know and he had a million of them because i mean he had been in the industry for so long oh yeah you know like so long and he was such an enigma to me and he was just so big he's like you know he was over six foot you know he oh easy you know he, he was a big dude and I remember one afternoon. Just gentle giant. He was. He was. He was. Yeah. He was. I, I remember one afternoon, me and my wife found out we were going to have our first kid. Mm-hmm. We were, you know, super happy, obviously. He calls me and like, I told him the news. You know, I was like, man, you know, my wife's pregnant. You know, it's yeah. like we're going to have our first baby. And he was just, he was so happy for me. And he kept up to date with how she was doing during the pregnancy really so just wanted periodic check yeah like you know like doctor visits like you know how's it going how's she feeling and then he knew the baby was born that Mm -hmm. i had my first you know my first child a daughter and 
like a week later, we got a package in the mail. And it was a postcard of Erwin, his head on a baby's body, like in a bath. <laughs> oh, and he said, he, he, <laughs> he, he wrote this really touching, sentimental message to my daughter and to us. And then he got her a Babar stuffed elephant from like FAO Schwartz in New York. Yeah. And sent her this and, and it just like meant the world to me. Mm -hmm. And I remember, like, I still have pictures of my daughter holding this thing. Yeah. And sending him pictures, you know, of her holding the thing, you know. And it was just, again, it was one of the, it was, it's, this is what really, really hurts me because how nice he was and how, how close we were. Mm -hmm. We never worked together. Yeah. And we had so many plans to, and we had so many ideas. It was just mainly scheduling Yeah, is what it was. And then when I really started getting cooking, his health was, I could tell yeah. that it was deteriorating a little bit. And, you know, it, it kind of worried me. And all the while, he became friends with not just me, but like ev almost everyone in my family. Yeah. Like he would like, message my sister-in-law and my brother my sister so he was just he was a buddy he was you yeah. know he was and you know it it sucks because he wanted to come down to the house and hang out with everyone so bad and mm -hmm. it was just scheduling wouldn't allow him the dude worked like a maniac you yeah. know um and then towards the end it was hard by the time i really had something for him to do that would have made sense mm -hmm. it was too late you know, and that that's one of those things that I think I'm going to carry with me for the rest of my life. It's it's a bit of regret. Sure. It's also a bit eye-opening as far as like, hey, take that chance mm -hmm. and make something happen. Because even though I have pictures and letters and the memories and everything, it's just the thing, the thing that we wanted to do. We were really trying to figure out how to do it without getting sued. <laughs> okay. Both of our words. <laughs> it was like... How the fuck are we going to do this without getting sued? Sure. But we wanted to do a a new version of Frankenstein. Oh, wow. And what we wanted to do was, and he wanted my son mm -hmm. to play opposite him. Oh, wow. Okay. So the, and this was a feature he, we wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And it was a boy moves to a town, new town. Mm -hmm. Of course, he's picked on mm -hmm. and he's picked on really bad mm. like it, it's there's hints of comedy but he, we went dark okay we went dark and so the boy would either hide in the library or he would just hide in his tree house mm -hmm. and he would draw or watch frankenstein mm -hmm. and then one evening on halloween the culmination of the abuse came to head where it was just final straw where he's just proud of his Frankenstein costume and he's trick or treating and it's ripped to shreds and he's beaten up and he's got to take that walk home like that with people laughing at him. And so he's destroyed. Yeah. While at home watching Frankenstein, he gets the idea. So this is where it gets dark. He builds a Frankenstein and with like, jumper cables yeah from his dad's truck turned on brings this thing back that he made out yeah. of body parts that he dug up no kidding yeah so yeah you you did you did go pretty dark we went that. dark this wasn't monster squad no it was not monster squad and i brought that up to him and he was like no we are going to draw an audience that the monster squad audience aren't old enough to see sure and I was like, cool. And, you know, we wrote we wrote back and forth, like, the script. We wrote on the script. And it was just so good. And, of course, he was obviously going to play the monster. Yeah. And, you know, when, when he passed, is he has the last five or six pages in his possession. That you've never seen? Yeah. Wow. What a bummer. And, and you know, and it's crazy because I wanted to reach out to his sister. Sure. Because she sort of took over as like curator of like his estate. Mm -hmm. And she even like went as far as to like, she sent a bunch of stuff to my family. 
Yeah. Just because she found like the paper trail of his relationship with them Mm -hmm. and that they were like important to him. Right. So she sent them a lot of stuff. I mean, all kinds of stuff. That's really cool. Yeah. You know, and I wanted to reach out to her, but I got to be honest with you, man, it, it was too hard. Yeah. You know, cause like I really took his death hard. Sure. I mean, you I, guys, you guys had cultivated a an entire friendship. I mean, 15 you know. years and it wasn't like we saw each other at conventions every season. Right. It was like we were on the phone and we were meeting up and I was going to Santa Monica and hanging out and I was like doing things and Mm -hmm. it was not a fan relationship that I had with them, like a convention relationship that I had with them. Right. It, it was, it was really like special, you know, it was like, we really became friends. And I remember the last time that I talked to him, it's like, oh man, it gets me because he was just such a sweet guy. He was like, I'm here. I'm in the hospital. It's like, I'll, I'll get out. Don't worry about me. I'm going to be good. And I remember waking up to that news, you know, and it was, did it was someone, devastating, man. Did, did someone reach out or was it just one of those things where you're thumbing through Instagram or something? I was thumbing through Facebook. Yeah. And to me, those are the worst ones where you're. Cause that was like, no, it's not. And I remember calling his phone. Yeah. And it just went to voicemail and that's sad. And I'm just like, and it was, a. It, that's the thing is like, it was such a weird experience because, um, there were a lot of people that, um, after the news came out, hit me up and was like, is this true? Yeah. And then it was like when the big sites were doing it, you know, like bloody disgusting. And then mm-hmm. all these guys, then I'm like, damn it. That just cements it. Cause yeah. They- and you know what? It was hard because I still had him in film to watch him yeah, and see him happy and healthy and stuff, you know? But it's like, then I couldn't call him and be like, Hey, what was it like on Friday the 13th? I know. Or what, you know what I mean? So it was, it's one of the blessings of this industry. Certain people live forever, you yeah. know, and it's, we're, we're documented in this moment in time and we can always quote unquote, go visit them. But I, I absolutely, I, I can't imagine. I mean, I've got a couple of friends in this industry. I don't think I'm as tight with them as you were with Irwin. Extremely tight. It was, it was a tough blow. Yeah. I still think about him continuously, not just because, you know, I see him, everywhere, but it's just in my heart. Yep. Something will pop up, you know, and it's just like, oh man, you know? Yeah. And then it's funny, even like today, being out and then you purchasing the... Yeah. I went and grabbed that uh, 20th anniversary of House of a Thousand Corpses and he's... He's under that mask, but he's on the cover. Oh, yeah. Good old Ravelli. Yep. You know what's funny? Uh, real quick, someone had made custom Ravelli toys. Really? Yeah. Oh, they were so badass. And I think he had, like, I think he had, like, I, I can't remember the number, 10, 20 to sell. Mm-hmm. I remember him giving me one that I gave to my brother. Yeah. Because my brother's a huge House of a Thousand Corpses fan. Sure. And so I gave I gave the the figure to my brother, and then I remember making a Ravelli mask, the big mask yeah, he wears, like a little bust. Oh, so I sculpted it and and gave it to him, and he had it on the on the convention table for a while, and then he ended up signing it, sending it back to me, and I gave it to my brother. Wow! So my brother has a pretty cool collection. Yeah, you know of Irwin stuff. That's cool. Yeah, but um, yeah, you know it's just. It's it's something that I'm, I'll hold with me for the rest of my life. I well, why wouldn't that you? relationship? You know, yeah, I mean, it, it means a lot to me. That's something you know. I've been in this industry to the degree that I am, which I I like to joke that I'm only knee deep. Yeah, you know, um, I've never I've made a couple of friends, but nothing quite like that where we'd bullshit all the time. And, yeah, you know. But I've I've had a few good ones. Um, there's three that stand out to me the most. Two of them were kind of the same experience, so I can lump them together a little bit. Mm. I may have mentioned a while back that I used to write columns for Scream Sirens magazine. And I had this idea about every issue. Like like Horror Hound has their Hall of Fame. Back of the issue, it's just one movie they're celebrating. You're inducted. Mm -hmm. And I thought we could do the same thing, but with like, for lack of a better term, Scream Queens or... Because I know that's... It's not really a term much anymore, but I was even going to include like 
women in makeup and women in wardrobe and writers, you know, all that stuff. I was going to try, I was really going to try and make a big deal out of it. I probably only got about a dozen done before leaving the magazine. The first two that I did, I did a, a twofer that got published and it was Debbie Rashan and Tiffany Shepis. I know you're not really supposed to do this in the journal field kind of thing, but I sent it to them first. I was just like, I'm doing this column. This is what I hope to do. I'm sending it to you before I even send it to my editor. Anything you want me to take out, anything you want me to put in, and uh, do you like it? Both of them responded overwhelmingly positive. They both thought it was this super sweet and told me I was very talented, and I, th- I thanked them for that and everything. Maybe, I don't know if it was even half a year, um, both of them were put on Motor City Nightmares guest list. So I was like, cool, I've... You know, I talked to them both on like, I think it was like Facebook Messenger at the time. I'll I'll get to, maybe they'll get to put a face to the name, you know. And what was funny was I'd go to their table and uh, I I visited Tiffany first. And the second she realized I was the guy who wrote that article, she jumped up and threw a hug on me and just said, you made me, she even signed one of my autographs. You make me sound like such a badass, you know. It was just so cool because I got to see something I did affect someone that I admire, you know, that yeah. I, that I'm a fan of. Yeah. And it was the same thing at Debbie's table. I went over to her and she threw a big hug on me and both of them were like, we're going to remember you, you know, so you, you keep doing what you're doing. Cause we're going to, you know, I think Shep has even joked, you're going to write my bio for my website, whenever I get that <laughs> together. It was just a really cool, positive experience. Shoot ahead. Maybe a year after that, I had made a, post and and again for for those listening if you're just starting out brad and i are very big about keeping our projects close to our chest we are wanting you to kind of take this journey with us as we do some new stuff but i as a young up-and-coming screenwriter was like yay so and so wanted to read my script you know and huge yeah you know and i i was posting about it like a nerd shep is she she popped me up on facebook she wanted to know who it was and I'm not going to name names, but, uh, she goes, call me and gives me her cell phone number. So I gave her a call and she said, that person is pretty terrible person. And I don't want to see you, your work compromised or used or you compromised or used. She goes, you could do what you want, but she goes, I know this person and I, I'm just as a friend, I don't think you should work with them. And I was like, okay. And I didn't. Every, what know. was your thought process? I was like, like after the phone call, like how did it register? It, like well, what? It was it was like it was a scramble because for one, a a prospect kind of got knocked out mm-hmm. for the better, obviously, um, because in time I got to see this person's body of work and some of the things they were doing, and it was like probably for the best. Not 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 a great situation got it so she she saved me she did uh but it was also with that came oh my god tiffany shepis has my number i have hers she's looking out for me she doesn't have to right you know none of these people have to right because at the time i mean tiffany's she's been big for a long time particularly in the horror genre and i'm just some guy i know i wrote her a thing but bottom line, it's really no different than someone coming up with a picture they drew. My drawing was a column. So everyone shares their art with the celebrity. They do little tributes. But she really seemed to take to me. And she it was it was her that reached out to me and said, listen, you're a talented guy. I really like you. I don't want to see you get eaten up by this person. So uh, she, she saved my bacon. And uh, we've... You know, we don't talk often, but I'll 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 pop her up now and again on uh you know, I'll shoot her of course we shoot each other, you know, Merry Christmas, happy birthday, you know, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. We don't talk regularly, but um there's been times where I've hit her up or her husband Sean, who's a writer, a very successful writer, and I've been like, I, I'm having trouble with this query letter or how does this read or sound? And you know, these are busy people, they don't have to do this. And Sean and Tiffany have been like, oh, yeah, yeah, if here, you could punch this up, you could say that, I would take this out. And it's just they they don't have to. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So to me, that that was one of the big 
relationships that I've t- taken from a con. Because, yeah, I mean, I, like I said, I've been, I've met just about everyone I've wanted to. And everyone's been super warm and super sweet. And there's some that have been unbelievable. And like George, when I got to meet George, super gracious. He was, he was literally my hero. And uh, he passed like two months later. Mm. Um, same story with uh, Angus Scrim. Okay. I got to meet him. And he actually, not quite to the degree of Irwin with you, but he was up there, obviously. And he was, he was elderly by this point. He goes, come here. You know, and I came around the table and kind of took a knee next to him. What's going on, bud? And he goes, I just wanted to tell you that I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. I said, I appreciate that. You know, I'm like, I'm sure you say that to all your fans. He goes, you don't understand. We're nothing without you guys. And he really just wanted to take that moment, you know, and he kind of threw a little hug on me. And it was just like the sweetest thing, you know, it would, and he passed just a couple months after that. Yeah. So, I mean, I have these instances where I'll meet someone who's who's up there, kind of the seasoned professional yeah. at this point, and I'll get that last little nugget of inspiration before they, they leave us. Those stand out, obviously. So you killed all my heroes. I think so. Okay, so do me a favor. Stay away from Harry. It's probably just a <laughs> Stay away from Richard. It's got to be something. I'm, I'm, I carry a cloud with me everywhere I go. <laughs> But no, uh, those that that first two, Debbie and Tiffany, um, I keep in touch with Debbie more or less through social media. See, I've never met Debbie, sweetheart. Yeah, I've sweetheart. heard. I've heard great stories. Yeah, and we cause... follow each other on Instagram. Yeah, but... she follows me too. Yeah, and but she, I, I've never met her. She's always she shoots me encouragement all the time. She and, seems uh, like a really cool person. She is. And yeah, she does. You know, both her and Shepis have played some really fucked up characters. Yeah. You know, and they they come. I, I'll even admit it. Both of them come across very intimidating. Yeah. Because they do play psychos and yeah. jobs and, you know, and uh, I've, I've said to Debbie before, you give the best hugs. Yeah. Yeah. Because she just, there's a picture of the two of us at the con and she's just snuggled right up to me and it's like, yeah. this is so sweet, you know, but it was just, those two gave me the confidence to keep doing what I was doing. And in that, at that moment I was screenwriting, but I was kind of focusing on the columns so I had done ones for like Daniel Harris, Ashley Lawrence, uh, what's uh, Adrian Barbeau, mm. Barbara Crampton, uh, Dee Wallace. Um, okay. She was another one that reached out to me after the fact and was just like, that was absolutely amazing. Dee's Thank rad you so too, much. Though. Dee is so fucking cool. So, I mean, I've had a lot of really good experiences, but Tiffany and Debbie were the kind of the, when the dam broke. Yeah. It's like, oh my God, you're the guy. And I was just like, hey, who the fuck am I? You know? But they made me feel like a million bucks, I guess, because I made them feel like a million bucks. Yeah. My final one is more recent. Um, a year or two ago, I met Dana DeLorenzo at Astronomicon in Michigan. Mm-hmm. And Evil Dead fans know her as Kelly Maxwell from the Ash vs. Evil Dead series. And she's just such a fucking badass on that show. She's She's like the perfect foil to Ash because he's got two sidekicks. He's got... Ray Santiago as Pablo, and he's like this hero worshiper that Ash just loves because he's he's all ego. And then you've got Kelly, who's just like this fucking idiot. You know what I mean? So it's very funny to have, it's like Ash has his angel and devil, you know, and it's just the dichotomy is, is great. So she became an immediate fan favorite. She was one of my favorites. And I got to meet her at Astronomicon and... Prior to meeting her, maybe when Ash vs. Evil Dead was announced, I'm not even sure it had aired just yet, I had seen she was going to be on it, and I had followed her on Twitter, and this is way back when I had a Twitter, folks, so (laughs) I apologize. If you go looking for me, I am not there. Uh, But at the time, I had one, and what's funny is I recognized Dana from other things, like the, uh, I believe it's the, was it the? Craig Ferguson show. Okay. Late night show. Yeah. She was on there as uh, the intern and I knew her from that. And I'd seen YouTube videos of her doing an absolutely haunting Amy Winehouse. I mean, the impression is one thing, but she can sing like oh, Winehouse. Oh, wow. And it's amazing because you're like, what talent, what a great impression. But it's chilling too because it's like she becomes Amy Winehouse and it's Jeez. really, really fucking cool. But um, I had hit her up saying, I know you're going to do Evil Dead. And I was like, I'd love to interview you or do a tribute, you know, whatever. 
I said, but what the funny thing is, the thing I've been seeing you in the most was a State Farm commercial. And I don't know if you remember, there was a series of State Farm commercials where they'd be in the middle of a conversation and then they would disappear because somebody somewhere on in America said, like a good neighbor, and then they would appear. Well, one of them was, I think this chick was talking to Dana and someone else in like a break room. And I, the lady said something like, so there I was, surrounded by snakes. And then she disappears and Dana goes, ah, oh, right at the good part. <laughs> and that's just what I remember. You yeah. know, I was like, that always made me laugh. Yeah. So, um, you know, I got in touch with her. I told her I knew her from State Farm and all these other things. And she thought that was cool. And she gave me some of her info about what she used to do growing up and she goes, just hear some bio stuff if you if you if you like, you know. So I wrote something out, and then I waited until after Ash vs. Evil Dead premiered a couple of weeks so that I could get a feel for her character. Okay. And kind of hype that because it was her new big thing. I did that. I never got a chance to put it out. Mm. Um, it was around the waning years that I was kind okay. of, you know, we were kind of parting ways. So it sucks because that was one that just didn't go anywhere. Uh, sadly. That was an, it was also around the time I was kind of giving up. Got it. You know, Stan Lee says, check out issue number five. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Whatever episode that was. But it was around that time where I was just... Two through six. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was just, it was during one of those episodes where I was just, you know, screenwriting. Nah. So I had, I had sent her a message. I basically apologized that I couldn't get the thing published and you know i appreciated her but i loved her on the show and i just said you're gonna be iconic now i said evil dead is huge i'm like you better get used to seeing yourself on toys you're probably gonna be in comics you know i just i really wanted her to feel good about where she was not that she didn't but uh she asked me what i did and i said well i screenwrite but it was kind of like eh you know you could tell by the way i wrote it that it was like well i kind of do this and she goes she said something to the effect of like, do you enjoy it? And I was like, I, I did, but it's a tough business. And I didn't get into any real details. And she said, listen, man, she goes, I could tell by talking to you. And she goes, whatever makes you fly, dude, keep doing it. Just keep going at it. She goes, don't listen to the negativity. Just keep pounding away. And based on that advice, kind of gave me a little bit of an uplift. Okay. You know, a little recharge a little bit, and because she she hadn't read any of my stuff really, and she again she's blowing up on this arguably a massive show that people right. have been wanting to see, so she didn't have to do that. And what she doesn't know, and if she listens to this episode, she'll find out. Yeah, the day that she got back to me, um, me and my family had just kind of walked away from a house that we couldn't afford anymore. Mm. This was during kind of the tougher part of that whole thing you know the mortgage crisis and all this stuff Mm -hmm. i i was we were at my folks house because we were going to move in with them my folks washer and dryer had broke so i was like you know what grab up whatever clothes you need i'll take it to our old house and while i'm there i'll pack some more stuff and i remember my wife going you want to go by yourself she was i can go with you i was like nah it's late just let me do it bad idea because i get to the house And I get the laundry going. I start packing some stuff. And as I'm going from one room to the other, um, I see the door frame for my daughter's room with her measurements. Mm. And I was like, so whatever, fine. Just push through. Mm. And then I'm in the kitchen packing up some stuff. And my daughter's drawings and stuff are on the fridge. And she was little real little at the time. So they're just the little crude kitty drawings. And I broke. I just, I finally just with no one around, I just kind of slid to the floor and cried in my kitchen. Cause I was just, this was rock bottom for me. And then I get this private message, whatever you call them on Twitter. And Dan- it was Dana just encouraging me. And I just remember thinking, what a day to get that. What, what a day for the universe to. And just up- out of the blue. It was in response. I'm not sure if it was, I don't know when I had texted okay, her, Okay. but she had finally responded and it just happened to be at that moment, you know, like timing is everything. Man. Isn't that funny? And like, it, it's like the universe nudged her. Hey, remember to hit this guy back up. Yeah. And she gave me this pick me up and, uh, I never told her that story. Really? I just told her that she gave me advice that kind of relaunched me. 
And this was at Astronomicon when I got to meet her. I said, listen, I don't know if you remember this. I told her that whole story, except for the, the house stuff. Right. I basically just said, your advice got me out there. And now I have projects. I've got a movie under my belt, I'm talking about a podcast. You know, I kind of gave her this quick, you know, convention rundown because people yeah. are in line. Yeah. So I kind of scrambled through all of that. And she remembered and she goes, yes. I, and she, she got up, walked around the table, gave me a huge hug. And she goes, I can't believe you've done all this. And she goes, and she goes, it's just, she goes, I just said words, Jace. And I was like, no, no, no. I was like, you don't understand. And maybe now she does. You know what yeah. I mean? But it was like, at the time, it was just the right time. Just what I needed to hear. And what was funny was her handler was kind of like, Dana, you know, <laughs> and, and totally her job, you know, right. you're supposed to, but Dana was so funny. She turns to her handler and was just like, no, this is a massive moment and I'm going to experience it. Just let me do this. <laughs> Cause she was like near tears. She was like, you're going to mess up my makeup. And I'm like, no, 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 I'm not trying. I'm not trying. But she's just like, that is so fucking cool. Jace. Wow. She's just like, I'm so, so happy. and proud of you. And that was a year or two ago, maybe. And then recently when we got this together, I sent her a message again saying, hey, the podcast is off the ground. We haven't gone live yet, but would you be interested in being interviewed for our show? And not only did she get back to me and say, you tell me when and where, but she was like, she goes, for one thing, your last name being Marsiglia. She goes, you're a fellow Paisan. She goes, I remember you, you know, she goes, but... I think about our conversation a lot. And this was a long time ago. She goes, you pop up in my memory a lot. And she goes, the fact that you reached out and was able to tell me updates and how things are going. She goes, and it sounds like it's going awesome for you. And I was like, yeah, it kind of is. You know, I was like, this thing I got going on with Brad, we've got a lot of big plans. And it seems like the waters are just kind of parting yeah. and letting us go through. And yeah. I was like, I don't want to jinx it. You know, I was like, but if you can be a part of it, I'd love for you to be on the show at some point. And she was just like, you get everything settled and you let me know. So I'd love to have her on the show, yeah, of course, definitely. sometime. But it, that was between her, Shepis, and Rashan. I look at them as like my Charlie's Angels. Because all three were very influential and very encouraging in my screenwriting career. They've all given me different levels of encouragement and inspiration. And uh, I'm proud to call myself a friend of theirs, yeah. you know, because, because again, we've said it about Harry. We've said it about a bunch of people. We don't really have anything to offer yep. them. Yep. And uh, the fact that they take the time and, you know, in, in Tiffany's case, especially where she's just like, I'm going to help you drive around this pothole. Yeah. You know what I mean? That yeah. That's big. That's huge. So stuff like that, um, again, out of all the nice people I've met, those are the three where I walked away. I, I got a core memory. Yeah, there's, there's that's cool. Something that's going to stay with me forever and something that I can look back on when I'm feeling down, you know, to just kind of, you know what? These three see something in you, kid. So do it for them even, you know, it's as if I don't have enough reasons to do it. Right. It's a good reminder that someone on the side of the fence that I've been trying to climb over and be a part of and be in that club, they're not just helping me over the fence, but they want me over the fence. Right. Which is huge for people like us. We were just punching our way. Oh, yeah. And, you know, yeah. trying to get in is so tough. And it's like when you find someone who's like, my guy, you've got something here, man. Yep. You know, just be appreciative. Don't glom. Because that's a mistake a lot of fans make. And, uh, you know, just they're people. So don't bug them any more than you would bug your own friends, you know. I always put myself in the position when I'm speaking with a celebrity, how I gauge it is like, how do I feel when someone is annoying me? Yes. Or when enough is enough? Yes. You know, like I'm, we have a, a point we're going to reach and it's like, okay, cut off. We're done. Right. Yep. You know. You know, there's always that one person in all of our lives that you're like, if if I'm making them feel the way this person makes me feel on the usual yeah. basis, then I need to back off. So, you know, just be respectful about it. Cherish those moments. Yeah. Because uh, we've said before, cons are a great way to network. But yeah, don't overstep. Be gracious. You might make a few lifelong friends out of this, you know. Definitely. I really I really hope Chepis, Rashan, and DeLorenzo, I, I, I hope that we've... We'll have a relationship long after Hollywood. I've worked with Shepis once on something. Mm -hmm. Social settings a few times. Yeah. Shepis and Kimmy, mm -hmm. um, they hit it off. Yeah. 
like immediately. We went to a a, a, a premiere one time and, and Tiffany and Sean were there. And like, as soon as we got there, like Shep is like beeline to Kimmy and like they're hugging and they're just going off. And she's just like, I don't know how you got this girl. <laughs> oh, sure. I don't yeah. know how, like she's too good for you. Like, I don't and know how you got this girl. And like, that's another funny thing. Shep is she, she'll bust your balls. Oh, hard. Yeah. yeah hard. But it's awesome. Like, but it is. It, yeah. And uh, there's been times where I've gone to a convention that she's at and she's just like, oh yeah. Hey, Jace. Great. Where's your fucking kids? Where's the fucking little ones? And I'm just like, what about me? And she goes, yeah, whatever. I've met you. Where's your kids at? Where are they at? And I'm just like, I'll bring them. I'll bring them up. But yeah, yeah she's, she's, yeah, she's, she's super, really cool. Super, she's super, really cool. Super we, cool. The thing I worked on with her um, was this, it was a, like a pilot TV show. I can't remember what studio it was for, but it was like a horror TV show with um, Sean Whalen and Felissa Rose as the hosts. Oh, so we shot okay. it at my studio. Sure. And Shepis was like a, a a presenter, like like kind of like a fangirl, like asking questions to the two guests on the show. Felissa and Sean were the hosts, mm-hmm. and the guests were Jan Birch and mm. Brandon Adams from People Under the Stairs. Oh wow! Again, but like not not getting too far off topic. But Shepis was on set, and she was just so fucking cool and so fun, and she was so sweet. You know, and um, she probably don't want that out there. No. But um, <laughs> absolutely. she was, you know, as, she is like. As she often oh. says, absolutely not. <laughs> but, you know, she's just, she's like such a good person. You know, I, I, I really do like her. Like, I hope to work with her um, on a project. Same. You know, like one day, if it happens, awesome. You know, but I know her schedule is crazy and she's doing fucking amazing things, which is rad. Oh, yeah. You yep. know, and it's like, you know, good for her. She deserves it. You Absolutely. know, definitely deserves it. So mm-hmm. I, guess I never met Debbie, never met Dana. You know, I was aware, yeah. obviously aware of Debbie. I mean, if you're in this business, you don't know Debbie Rashawn. You're, yeah. Or if you're a fan of this business and you don't know Debbie Rashawn, you're. <laughs> well, what's funny is like for people like us, when Debbie and Tiffany are in a movie together, I'm like, Oh God, it's like heat with De Niro and Pacino. <laughs> I'm like, the, the two are inhabiting the same space. Yeah. The, the fucking world's going to explode if they Liter- get too close. They, yeah, yeah. But they, they're just, they're so iconic. They they're, are. They're powerhouses, man. They, they are. And I, I They chew the scenery for sure when absolutely. they're in there, man. They're they're amazing. <laughs> What's really funny is Shepis in particular, without naming the films, there's been time or two where she's seen that I picked something up or I was watching something. And she goes, that piece of shit? And I'm like, come on. I'm like, no. I was like, you know I'm watching it for you, right? And she's just, I don't care. Don't waste your money. You know, and it's just so funny. But it's it's one of those deals where however good or bad the movies are, her and Shep is elevate it. Oh, yeah. Way oh. beyond. Oh, yeah. And they got to know it. Got to. And if they don't, you, ladies, please. You are pretty much irreplaceable. It's invaluable having somebody like you guys on the set. You know, right. Because you're just going to take something that could be mediocre and just you're going to make me watch mm-hmm. it. And I'm going to enjoy it just for that. You know, but she's she's so humble about it. She's just like, watch something else. No, of course not. I'm supporting. Yeah. But yeah, it's just it's super cool talking to both of them. And they're just there's they're great. I think it's one of the reasons that I am more of a fan of horror films after being able to meet a lot of these people. Sure. Very salt of the earth. Another big thing that I like about it, though, is having a daughter. Yeah, and having ca- characters like De Lorenzo's Kelly Maxwell, yeah, uh, Nev Campbell's Sydney Prescott. I love seeing that women really kick ass in this genre, and it's great for my daughter to be able to see you know women women fight, women survive. Positive role models, positive not role falling models. down in the woods and like right, uh, you know. And it's it's these are the characters and people like Shepis and Rashawn and them. They they've really made some iconic and really badass characters. Yeah. And, just ladies, no matter who we've talked about on this show and beyond, if you're a horror movie actress, and I know sometimes you probably hit the set like, Ugh, you know, it's, yeah. it's there's got to be those days, you know, but someone's kid out there, someone's daughter is looking at you guys like, I want to be that tough. I want to kick the monster's ass the way that those chicks do. And, and they do. They do. I absolutely adore it. Yeah. So keep doing what you're doing. They are really cool people. It's nice because that's the key word is that they're people. They're people. They are. And I don't know. You know, if this podcast were to ever really blow up and you and I become. When. When it blows up. Thank yes. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, if we become household names, it's one of those deals. where When. <laughs> hell yeah. I did it again. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> yes. When we become household names, 
you just got to remember that kind of grace with fans. It's just someone comes up and it's just like, man, you want to make their day the way our icons made ours. Yeah. You know what I mean? Throw them that handshake yeah. and just be like, dude, keep going, kick, kick ass. You yeah. know, it's a flash in time for mm-hmm. that person. But the person who came up to you, they're going to remember it forever. Yeah. Just like, you know, my, do. one of my first interactions as someone wanting me to sign something, mm-hmm. I, I didn't know what to make of it because we were at a, <laughs> we were at a convention after we had wrapped maternal. Mm-hmm. It was like making its rounds. We were putting it out there and doing things with it. Yeah. We hadn't officially like released the poster. Mm-hmm. They were in the process of being made and we were going to take them. And like, I know I'd give, I had given Felissa a bunch to hand out at her table and stuff like that. But prior to that, we were at Monster Palooza. We were in Burbank and I was walking around with a couple of friends and I noticed there was this guy like kind of following us. And I'm one of these people where I'm like, I, you know, eye contact. No, I don't want to make eye contact. Like, you know, I know. Like, but he stops me and he's like, excuse me, I don't want to bother you. And I was like, yeah, I was like, is everything okay? This guy had like made his own poster off of like the post of the poster that uh, that we put out. With like, like the chair? social media. Yeah. It was it was just like a chair. It right? was a wheelchair with yeah. a doll sitting in it. Yes. We were having posters made, but he like took the image and like had it printed and then was going around and having everyone sign it. Holy shit. You know, and he was like, would you sign this for me? And I was like, me? Like, what right. the fuck do you want me to sign it for? Because it, it's so bizarre. Yeah. You know? And he was like, no, please, could you? And I was like, okay, yeah, like, yeah. okay. You know, and so like I signed the poster for him and then like he asked for a picture. So, you know, like we took a picture and w- we talked for a few minutes and he was just a fan, like a, a good dude that just loves horror. That's pretty neat. Yeah, man. you know, and, yeah. and so we talked and, you know, he was a cool guy. I'd actually seen him a couple more times and he's always like, what else are you doing? What's coming out? You know, sure. and, and I remember, um, you know, he wanted to see Michael. So I think we got him a copy of that. I think it was on World of Death. I think we sent him a Blu-ray of that. Yeah. That we had done, you know. Um, Is Michael part of that Blu-ray set? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Michael's part of World of Death. So yep. I still have a shitload. So if someone wants them, just hit us up. <laughs> <laughs> like they sent me like, I think like two or three cases. And I think I have like a case and a half left. Well, you know, uh, 5195podcast <laughs> at gmail.com. <laughs> we'll get you a copy. Yeah, yeah, and, and, I think, and I think I, I still might have a few maternal instincts posters are, that are lying around so you know if someone really wants one yeah. you know and we can stick them on the hell i don't even think i've got one really not not of maternal well, you i've got a signed one of uh michael okay 11 by 17 yeah yeah i've got michael but i'm not sure if we ever so you don't have a poster of your own movie no no I've that's, got the I've got the DVD that it's on. That's cool. You know, but I don't think it ever <laughs> materialized. Fucking cool. So, oh my god, I I gotta find out where these things are at. They're around here somewhere. Well, what's funny? My first autograph was for you. Oh really? On the on the maternal script? Yeah. Which is hanging in right here in the right, studio, right here in the office. Yeah. And, uh, you you kind of surprised me with it one night. You were like, "Hey man." Can I get your autograph? And I'm like, I thought you were fucking around. No. No, it was the actual shooting script that yeah. I believe still has a few uh, traces of blood on it. Oh, it has it. blood on it. You know, there's, there's lots of notes in it. There's yep. yeah, there's a lot of stuff in that thing. And yeah. uh, I was like, are you serious? So you're like, yeah, fucking sign that shit. Yeah. So I signed it and was just like, that was, that's my first and only so far. Wow. That's cool. You know, that's fucking awesome. But it was neat. You know, it was yeah. just kind of like, oh man, that's cool. And see, just it's a cool feeling. And, and and you know what? And that's what I love about this, like the horror industry is just, it's like a big family, man. And everyone is just so cool with each other and supportive of each other. And, you know, they want to see each other do good. And, you yeah. know, um, well, and of the- course there's some out there that like freak me out. Like, I mean, maybe I'll, I'll give a, I'll give a crazy experience one day Okay, uh, that I had at, at a con with, 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 with an, a certain individual. A very fucking crazy experience at a convention. Okay. You even going to, should you even name names? I won't name names right now, but in, w- when I talk about it in, a, in another episode, we can talk about it and I'll talk about it next week. This actor literally leapt over the table and fucking like Look. grabbed a hold of me and like. Bear hugged you? Kinda? It wasn't a bear hug. It, it was, he was, I don't know. I don't know what the fuck was going on, but there was like handlers and friends like trying to pull him off me and i'm like what the fuck is going on like it was whoa it, yeah so we'll get into that one next week for sure I'll, if we can re- if i remember like we'll okay. it, we'll get out there because it was it was pretty fucking interesting that's funny yeah, yeah and when you find out who it is you're going to shit all right well yeah so put my diaper on for yeah, that episode. yeah or at least change the one okay that, yeah change change that, do that one, too. so okay well i mean i think we're pretty much there 
so good it was me. good. I, I I think it was a good one. Yeah, you know, and I I hope uh, whoever listens, you know, takes something from this one as well. You know. Yeah, I do too. It's it's pretty cool. It's it's a pretty cool position to be in when you've befriended someone in the industry. And, yeah. Uh, Especially when that that turning moment happens, where it's fan to friend. It is, and it's. I have a hard time reminding myself of that. Yeah. Because I always just feel like a fan. You know what I mean? I mean, still to this day, like as a joke, if I have something that Harry has done, Harry Marfadini. Oh, sure. I will always tell him, can you please sign it to make an $8 item worth $2? <laughs> I, <laughs> nice. always, I always bust his but chops yeah, that's, about that. That's how good the friendship is. Yes. You know, it's like he's, yeah. he takes it and yeah. gives it right back. Yes. Yeah. He's a great guy. Yeah, no, he does. So, no, I had fun, man. Awesome. Yeah. It was definitely fun. So, well, until next time. We'll see you guys.